All right, so here today, I thought I'd update you and show you the updated tier list over here for where Jingyu Wan is placed and some also thoughts that I had on the character itself because, damn, I don't know why, but with Zila, when she released, I saw a lot of people hyping her up. I didn't see that much people, like, downplaying her abilities, but I do see with Jingyu Wan being a little bit less, um, and I do think if you build this character properly, you have a great character to use, and I think that he is very well made, and I am not regretting my summons at all. With that, let's jump into it. If you're new to the channel, like and subscribe. Let's have some fun with it. Let's check it out. So with it, this is what we have as the tier list that Prywin did go and update. And this is what they placed Jingyu on um, over for uh, damage dealer, correct? Now, again, nothing else changed this tier list. The only real change that was kind of given was that Jingyu Wan is just added to the tier list. Um, that's where his placement is as of their update, right? So again, I do think this. And first, I want to make sure this is, this is a statement for all of my videos in the future. Can we not talk about power creep? We got time. I, I don't know why people are like, oh, Jingyu Wan sucks. Go for Kafka. Kafka's going to be 10 times better, right? And then, like, after that, power creep, power creep, power creep, right? Again, depending on what you pull for, pull for it. It's a game. It's a PvE game. At the end of the day, when you reach, like, level 80 in that point, most content will be a breeze through, so it doesn't really matter at that point. But again, for what Jingyu Wan is, I still think they made a very strong character, and he is very good, okay? I understand Zila is very strong, and with Resurgence and all of that, she can do a lot, and that's what her character is. And point blank, that's what it is, right? Again, not everyone was guaranteed to pull Zila. It will take you some time. You can definitely guarantee yourself to pull Jingyu Wan. If you did save and not pull in Zila, go for this. There is a very high likelihood that this character can reach that guarantee and you're good to go. You got to remember that at the end of the day, that, that that's the entire factor playing into everything, correct? So again, for where Jingyu Wan lands in this tier list, he is an outstanding damage dealer. But again, I do think that if you were to go over here, hit this button and switch it to AoE, you will see that Jingyu Wan is probably really there on par with Zila. Arguably, you can say better, though again, Zila's strong. Personally, I would mix match it here, say Jingyu Wan does go in front. Um, but again, Zila is strong with Resurgence and all that. Uh, she's a very strong character. So for what she is, you can, again, it's a 50-50. You can argue which one goes ahead, which one is the better character. But I do think both of them kind of stand on par. Like if you were to take this, like put it like right here and they're next to each other, like right, right next to each other as the same thing. That's what you can say. Cause each character shines in a different area in where she is able to proc that and be able to do so much while he can just kind of wipe at the same time. It's going to shine the same way, right? It's going to, that's how it is. So I do think for what it is, Jingyu Wan is a very strong character. If you're going off the AOE tier list, you can kind of see he really does rank here. He does, right? If you go off the single target, he won't rank as much, but he'll be right up there. For a damage dealer, he will be right up there. Um, though, again, yeah, uh, Ken Yanching, uh, whatever, is kind of a little bit low. But um, I still think Kara goes down, yeah. So that's what it looks like. But again, Jingyu Wan, both AOE, both single target. He does put up good numbers, right? I would argue that, you know, maybe some, some swaps in some of these things may be uh, better. But for what it is... I would say that he is an S-plus character. He is very strong. He is very good. He will help you clear a lot of content. Though, again, you have to have the correct perception with him that he's not an end-all, destroy-every-team type character where it's like, oh, he's supposed to be hitting for these insane amounts of damage. If you build his team properly, if you handle and build Jingyu one very properly, he will do damage. And for what I am at currently, he's helping. He, he really, I can see, I can genuinely see the difference from what I had prior to the team and then adding Jingyu one building my team around Jingyu one And now my team is pretty crazy. It genuinely is, right? So... At the end of the day, I do want to say that Jingyu Wan is a strong character, um, and I am super happy with the release. People are like, oh, you're going to regret pulling for Jingyu Wan. You should have just pulled for Zila, uh, or you got to wait for Kafka. What are you doing? You have to understand, Kafka's not releasing for a decent amount of time, right? You, you have to go through Silver Wolf. You have to go through uh, Locha, right? Locha. Um, he's the healer. You have Silver Wolf, the sub uh, buffer, debuffer, whatever, and uh, sub DPS. That has to be gone through too. So you have two things to already go through, and then you can pull for Kafka. So you'll you'll be sitting there with a four star damage dealer, potentially whatever other damage dealer you build, for a while, for a good amount of time, until you actually get to the point when you can pull for Kafka, right? Which is again, that's six weeks away, and a little bit more, right? Nine weeks, right? Nine weeks, eight weeks. Let, let's let's speculate eight weeks we don't know when she releases if she's the first banner of 1.2 or even if she lands in 1.2 we don't know any of that right so 
let's say eight weeks you'll be saving in game for eight weeks you'll be pulling constant support characters uh, let's say you did skip zila right now you're stuck with what is it two supports basically and then what right so if you did pull zila then you could definitely skip jing you want you don't need him he's an aoe you have to build a team around him anyways you can't really correlate zila and jing you want a team because again they're both selfish for skill points they need their skill points and they're going to use their skill points right so you have to understand that that's the case yeah so if you didn't pull for a damage dealer the first two that were given to you You'll be waiting for a bit. Again, Kafka's a great character, so maybe just pulling for her is great, which I'm not saying it's a bad option, but I am saying that, yeah, for what he is at the start of the game, having a great damage dealer help you breeze through some content, and if you build teams around him, he will help you for Simulated Universe. He will help you for uh, the any content, just any content overall. He will be there, yeah? And I am happy that I can say he is an S-plus character. Again, the general tier list does put him over here um, for S, but... For what he is, I am super happy with how he's designed. Um, and I also want to, like, later on make my own tier list where I go through everything and give my rankings of what I see um, and all of that. But I do think that, uh, again, if you are questioning if you should pull for him, if you want and you don't have a damage alert right now, you can consider it, okay? You can always also consider if you want to just put a multi or two in to a banner where you do not have guaranteed pity. If you lost the 50-50, right, and you already lost it, do not touch the banner until you guarantee a character you care for, right? That's there. But if you're at the start and you just want to put a multi or two in, let's say you win the 50-50 right then, then and there in that two multis you just put in, you just got a character at, two, uh, two, at 20 pity. That is huge, right? Then you can just go for a character later on, which again, over the course of a few weeks, you will be able to save a good amount of currency. So you can go in for whoever you want afterwards and hopefully pull them. Yeah. But again, it doesn't matter. Do what you want. It's your game. It's a PVE game. You can build, you can win, theoretically, building all of the current five-star roster that's on the standard banner. If you can pull them and formulate a team off of that, you could. But um, from what it is, Zila and Jing Yuan, I do think that both characters are outstanding. Um, and if you picked one or the other, or you picked both, I don't know what happened there. But if you did pick between these two, you still have a great character. I'd personally say that they're on par. Though again, yes, I see Zila do pop off here and there. But the same way I see Jing Yuan pop off, they're both great. They're both outstanding. It's not a mistake you made if you pulled one versus the other. I think they both shine in what they need to shine in. And it depends on how you build them. You will have a strong character. You will have a strong DPS. There is no changing that fact compared to all the other, again, offensive support, all of that. Remember, support characters will always rank high in tier lists. In the future, when you see other support characters release, like, again, Silver Wolf and Locha, they may rank up pretty high because the need, right? There's a need for those characters. So, again, remember, you did make a mistake. Have fun with it. I think that the placement here uh, is pretty accurate. But, again, for the rest of it, uh, nothing else really changed. We already kind of agree that this is pretty good if I were to change it back to general. Um, this is pretty good ranking. You, you kind of have an idea of what these characters are and what they do for the uh, support versus defense roster. But again, I it, mentioned this recently. I started using Jepard. Holy hell, Jepard is a great character. I will say he's one of the one of my favorite characters. Not one of the best, but one of my favorite characters. Um, and he is so useful with so many characters. So I do think that... And I hate on Jepard day one. So I take that back. I'm sorry, Jepard. I, I said anything wrong to you. He's a very good character. Um, and again, if you do team up Jing Yuan with Ting Yuan, you will see a massive difference. So if you did pull Ting Yuan, W, okay? Now go build her. Go build Jing Yuan. Formulate a team with them and then correlate the other two units. You will have a great team. I'm telling you now, you have to try it. Outstanding team comps you can make with that. Try it. So again, let me know in the comments, do you agree with his placement over here or what do you think? And again, your experience with the character itself. With that being said, I'll end the video there. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Helps out a ton. Peace out. Been it for me. Yeah.